Hello drummers and other creatures. I'm going to look today at a what I'm calling a technical primer to Afrobeat drumming. Uh, I made a couple of videos and released them recently where I explained the first and second beats of Afrobeat according to the master himself, Tony Allen, who invented the style, so he knows what he's talking about. Uh, and I had a comment from someone saying that they found this interesting, essentially, um, but it's quite challenging to get the hang of. And yeah, the, the coordination involved in playing this style is a little bit tricky. And so I thought it might be interesting to present a sort of introductory set of exercises that will help you to develop the coordination that you need in order to play Afrobeat drumming. Um, it's kind of useful, so whether or not you're interested in Afrobeat as such, uh, we're introducing an alternate uh, ride slash hi-hat pattern that's that's used in sort of funk playing and, and lots of different styles of music. And um, so you can use this to learn Afrobeat. Uh, you can use this also to just help you increase the coordination that you have between your limbs as pertains to funk, rock, and, and all the styles of music that we all know and love. Um, so, you know, let, let's jump into it. Um, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit some of the, um, the things that we're going to learn how to play. I'm going to focus on the ride um, for, for reasons I'll, I'll go into, but just to give you a little introductory drum to show you what we're going to be working on here. So what do we have? Um, it, it occurred to me, and this is something I've been thinking about for a little while, that the, the, the basic mechanics of this pattern, and again, Tony Allen plays all sorts of other things, but this seems to be at the, the sort of core of the Tony Allen Afrobeat groove. Tony Allen's playing a pattern that, that for all intents and purposes, is the same as the, the well-known jazz swing. Uh, we've got a broken pattern here, where we've got one and then two strokes, dun, da, da, dun, da, da, dun, da, da, dun. Uh, which we would count one, uh, one and a two and a three and a four and a, which I'm, I'm counting as sixteenths and, and miming nicely there. Um, in a jazz setting, we'd be going one, two and three, four, and we count it as eighth notes, but the mechanics are basically the same. So let's compare and contrast a, a normal straight ahead swing where I'm playing my left foot on the two and four. So it's one, two and three, four, and one, two and three, four and so on. Uh, and if you're familiar already with playing the swing pattern, that might make this uh, relatively accessible. But if you're not familiar with this, I feel quite sure that, that this would be a not bad avenue for introducing yourself to the coordination that you need. The feel is different, but the mechanics are the same. I think I'm repeating myself, but here we go. So the regular swing. And then our Afrobeat style, which is a straight expression of the same thing. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set up uh, this ride and hi-hat pattern, hi-hat foot, and then I'm going to add the snare and bass drum. And in this, which I think is going to be part one of a series of, of introductions to the sort of technical aspects of Afrobeat, the technical primer, sounds good, doesn't it? I hope. Um, I'm going to, in this part, I'm going to show you how to introduce a bunch of different bass drum patterns at varying degrees of complexity and, and challengingness, if that's a word. So, uh, you know, that's what we're going to uh, try and deal with now. So. I don't know, let's see, let's see what we're going to start with. The first things first, um, it, what I'm trying to, to put across is, is a method that works really well for anything you want to play, but it's all about sort of being slow and kind of deliberate about, um, uh, you know, what you want to do. And the, th the place that we're starting, sorry, is on the right. Now, when I demonstrated the um, original Afrobeat patterns, uh, you'd notice if you watch those, that we're playing on the hi-hat and there's the movement of the foot up and down while the hand is playing the cymbals. 
And uh, in today's little video, I'm going to just focus on playing the ride, so you don't really need to think about negotiating the way the hi-hat sounds. So we're going to be operating, again, the same uh, coordination, the same mechanics, but without worrying about whether the hi-hat sounds a bit too open, you know, if you're not uh, operating the foot optimally. I hope that makes sense, but the idea is we concentrate on the ride today. Now, first things first, we just want to get that pattern going. So it's one and a two and a three and a four and a... And I'm going to play with the tip of the stick on the bow of the cymbal, I don't know, usually halfway between the bell and the edge of the cymbal. Will sound okay. And we want to, you know, play the ride quite lightly. Um, if you lay into the thing too much, it can sort of overwhelm. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to practice playing that pattern just with your riding hand and sort of listen, try and get it sounding nice and consistent. We're going to do it slowly, as I said, and uh, just sort of settle with that. Now, I have no idea who the audience is I'm talking to, and anybody could be watching this, and you might find this very easy, or you might find it challenging. Whatever uh, stage of the game you're at, if it's a game, uh, um, just stay with this and, and satisfy yourself that this feels good and comfortable before you try to move on to the next stage. The, the big thing about learning our instrument, probably anything else, is just being patient at each stage. And not that you don't want to push your limits a little bit, but let yourself get used to the thing first and then move on to the next thing. Okay, here we go. So it's one and a two and a three and a four and a. Maybe you, you do that for five minutes or whatever it takes to get comfortable, you could do it slower. Nice and easy, loose and bouncy. The next thing we're going to do is add the hi-hat foot. I prefer to play the hi-hat for this um, with the heel up. So I'm lifting up the back of my foot, the heel literally, and using my whole leg to, to play the sound of the hi-hat. Now Tony Allen himself, as I mentioned before, says don't do heel up, play only heel down and blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm sure he's right, but I can't do it. So I'm playing heel up uh, for this purpose. You want to get a nice, tight, crisp sound on the hi-hat. That, that's the key thing. However that works for you, that's cool. Heel up or heel down. But I'm, I'm playing heel up, and we're going to do it on the and. So we've got one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a... and that pattern is not going to change over the course of the exercises I'm going to show you. And the last thing we're going to add that's static, that's not going to change, is we're going to play the snare on the two. So it means we're going to go one and a two and a three and a... And no, you know what, actually, I'm not going to count to four, I'm going to count a bar of two. One and a two and a one and a two and a... That makes it a little bit more simple. One and a two and a one and a two and a one and a two and a one and a two and a. Um, and again, Tony Allen plays with a really light touch, and I noticed in the videos I made before that I was actually quite heavy on the snare compared to what I wanted to be. So uh, I'll try and keep it light there. Uh, again. I'm playing with the uh, butt end of the stick, ha ha. Uh, again, it's a Tony Allenism. I'm sort of trying to, to get the hang of his whole style. It, it takes time though. Anyway, snare on the two, uh, and it goes like this.
play, play, play. I don't know how long it's going to take. Everyone is different. Some people pick, and th pick things up really quickly. I think it takes me quite a long time to get the hang of new things, but it's, it's fine, it's not a competition. Um, but that is the, the hand pattern with the left foot, and we're not going to change that. Now we're going to add the bass drum. And the first bass drum I'm gonna uh, play here is just on the one, so it's coincident with the first of the, the three strokes that I'm playing like this. And hopefully that's something that you can establish. And again, sounds like any rock beat, really. Uh, it's not particularly Afrobeaty, but we're just going to get the coordination out of the four limbs. And you might find that adding the bass drum in to this, once you've got comfortable with it, sets everything off a little bit. And you need to find your balance again with it. Let's have a listen. Now, once I get that all going, I can do what I, what I sort of think of as a, like a, a body scan, where I move my attention between the four individual limbs, right? So uh, I'll listen to the hi-hat a little bit and think, am I opening it too much or not enough? Is it sounding nice and crisp and so on? And just keep the pattern going, but my attention is there. Then I look at the snare, and again, am I hitting the snare in the middle? Am I playing it too loud or too soft? Do I get a nice attack when I'm playing? I have a little bit of a think about that. I can then move my attention to the bass, and the same thing, am I playing it too loudly or too softly? It's quite good to record yourself as well to get a little bit of uh, sort of objective feedback on the, the matter, um, and, and so on. You know, is it in time? Uh, then I move my attention to the cymbal, um, again, you don't have to do it in the same order I'm doing, but you get the idea, right? You do a little move and check how everything's sounding. So, we now have the bass on the one, and the next thing, we're going to add something that's a little bit challenging. We're going to play another bass drum note on the E of the one, and that means that it will fall in between um, the hi-hat, well, sorry, not the hi-hat, it's the ride, in it? Um, it's going to fall in between the ride notes like that, so it's in the gap. So we've got uh, one E and a, uh, and the E is in between. So the bass drum is going to be like this. Now, that could be quite challenging if you're not used to doing this. So to get yourself used to doing it, maybe even you just play one stroke on the ride and the two bass drum strokes. Just let your body get used to the idea of two with the foot, one with the hand. And after that, you can add in the other two sixteenths. And I don't know how long you need to spend doing that, but you know, probably not all day, but if you take a little bit of time uh, to focus on that, that will make it easier when you try and put the other elements back in, okay? And again, don't worry if this takes you time and you have to be patient with it. Yeah, now I've just added in the hi-hat. You get the idea. Now I'm going to put the snare in. I'm going to repeat this a lot, but you're going to have to play that for some time. If you're not familiar with this kind of coordination, do it for a long time until it starts feeling comfortable. Maybe today you practice it, maybe tomorrow again, day after, I don't know how long it'll take. But do it, be, be as patient as you can. Okay, now, we're going to now change the bass drum, and this time we're going to play the bass on the one and the and. So we've got one and a, ooh, I can't do it. One and a, like this, one and a. So we have 
the bass drum coincident with the first of the cymbal strokes and the second, which is the, the first of the two sixteenths, like this. Do that a bunch, then add the hi-hat. Then end up with the ride, bass, hi-hat all together. Now we bring the snare back in. That's the Afrobeat version of We Will Rock You. Okay. Play, 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 play. Next bass drum pattern, we're going to move from the and to the ah. Uh. So we've got the bass on the one and the ah. Uh. We'd have this. So we have the bass coincident with the first of the ride strokes and the last of the ride strokes with the eighth and two sixteenths. Now, you might find, for instance, I mean, let's add the hi-hat back in, and you might find you have to really, really slow this down to get the coordination. You can't just play it like that. takes quite a bit of coordination. Okay, now I'm gonna add the snare into it and we'll play it a little bit. Right, making sense? Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add back in the E of the one. So we've got that bass drum note that falls in between the ride notes, in between the cymbal notes. So we'll have... Okay. Now, this kind of rubs everything up against everything else. So this is a really challenging pattern to play. So I would implore you to work very, very slowly on each stage of this uh, progression that I'm offering and uh, you know see how you get on with that but don't don't rush through this this is not one day's work this is probably not a week I don't know I, I'm very loath to say how long something takes but it could take a long time to really get this sort of coordination together especially if you've never played anything like this before if you've got some experience with like swing coordination that might come a little bit easier um, I find that my, my um, you know, studying jazz, what's known as independence again, I think falsely, but jazz coordination, if you like, um, allowed me to develop the Afrobeat thing. Um, you know, not, it wasn't that difficult uh, to get the initial coordination right. But if you haven't done that before, this would be very tricky. Okay, now let's put that pattern together. And it doesn't matter how slowly you need to do it at first. This is something I can't overemphasize, which is why I'm repeating it over and over again. And uh, I've, you know, I'm, there's really an aversion to doing things slowly, but you will learn this way. Okay, and that's the last of the bass drum patterns I'm going to show you today. Now, um, something I'm terrible at, I forgot to mention, and I'm supposed to mention it earlier in the videos apparently, but if you're enjoying doing this, and if you think that I might be able to help you directly with 
any issues you have with your drumming, help you figure out what to practice, how to practice, how to move forward if you're a little bit stuck and uh, you want a little bit of advice, I'm available, I'm a drum teacher and uh, uh, tell me something I didn't know and uh, I'm available on like Zoom or Skype, you can get in touch with me and book a lesson if you think I might be able to help you with your drumming. So there's the plug, plug number one. Second plug I guess, don't forget to like and subscribe and do all of that good stuff um, and I'm doing that now a little bit more in the mid middle, not waiting for the end. So do all of that, it helps me uh, get my uh, drumming message out to the world and so on and so forth. Now, plug done. I'm going to uh, summarize and then run through each one of these patterns, right? So we had the bass on the one. One, two, one, two, one, two. Then we had the bass on the one in the E. One E, two, one E, two, one E, two. Then we had the bass on the one and the and. One, two, one, two, one, two. Then we have the bass on the one and the R. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. And finally, the really tricky one, one E and then the R. One, two, one, two, two, one, two. Okay, now I'm gonna play each one of those four times in a row and this is what you're aiming to do. Once you can play each pattern individually, you're gonna play each one in sequence. So I'm going to do four repetitions of each one and then move on straight to the next without stopping and hopefully without messing up too badly. And once you can play four in a row, then do two in a row, then do one of each, so that each time you play the bass it's a different pattern. And what we're aiming to be able to do is to then improvise, meaning that you can then play the ride, the snare and the hi-hat the same every time, but your bass drum is going to play any one of those patterns that you fancy playing. Once you can do that, it sounds something like Okay, so that wraps that up. I'm going to provide some printed material. I'll do a PDF that you can download that has this all written out and that might help to um, fathom some of the interactions between the, the hands and feet here. And then in the next video, part two, I'm going to show you a similar routine for developing a bunch of snare drum variations that you can then start mixing up. Then things get complicated. But I think there's something here that whatever your ability level, you should be able to start working through these coordination patterns. And uh, 
Again, the key word to everything is patience. So wrapping things up, I'm going to again do my little plug. I'm a drum teacher and if you feel like I can help you with your drum learning in any way, please use the details in the description box below and get in touch with me and we can have a bit of a chat about what you need and whether or not I can help you. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching this. I really appreciate it. Uh, click the like thing, subscribe to my channel and comment and let me know how you got on with this, if you found the topic interesting and if there's anything else you'd like me to cover because I'm very open to doing uh, stuff that's popular, I guess. You know, we're all trying to please our audience. So that'll do for today. I think for you, time to go off and practice.